Hello chaps and chapesses. Pete made me do it. Today we're here with Kieran from Fully Mill uh, to talk about my top 10 salmon patterns that I wouldn't leave home without. <laughs> I know you're not really a salmon angler, but today I'm going to um, talk you through a few yeah. of my favourites. No problem. Um, yeah. Fortunately, Fully Mill, a uh, great provider of, uh, of good quality salmon flies, yeah. and, and one that I'm very happy to, to put in my Excellent. box and, yeah. and utilise on the river each season. Good news. My number one, or number ten, because we'll count down backwards uh, in, my, uh, in my salmon fly box, and really this pattern could have gone anywhere in my list but I'm going to start it at number 10, and that is the Alley Shrimp Cascade. Uh, here we've got a fly that has everything you need as a salmon. Uh, it's got a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, yeah. some silver, some black, and it comes in varying sizes and in shoot fly and hook form as well. Okay. Um, so it allows us to fish it all season long. It's actually a adaptation of an original fly called the General Practitioner, yeah. uh, which was red and black in colour and worked very well in PT waters. And this actually, by lighting up a little bit, we've got a bit of silver in the body here. It means that it's very effective in clear water as well. Yeah. Um, personally, uh, I also tend to find that it works quite well towards the back end of the season when the fish are getting a little bit more aggressive yeah. and they'll hone in on the ready colours. Okay. Yeah. Um, so make sure that's in your fly box. Nice. Number nine, and this is a, a local favourite of us here. Um, we're on the famous banks of the short stream rivers yeah. of, of southern England. Mm -hmm. and. Whilst they're not known so well now for their salmon runs, over over history they've they've made many, many angler tap with right. a big fish. Yeah. And we have to fish a little bit differently for them here. So our alley shrimp is not so successful. But this, completely okay. different. Yeah. You'll probably recognise this from yeah. trout and reservoir fishing. Uh, it's almost a woolly bugger style pattern and it's called the JW nymph. And it's got this massive tungsten bead on the front. Yeah. Actually, we drop them into deep holes okay. and induce the take with a sink and draw technique. Yeah. The salmon just come tearing out of the deep holes after these. Right. Uh, I've also found they're really effective in canyon rivers and deep pockets yeah. uh, anywhere around the world. Oh, so make sure that's play. in there. Yeah. Number eight, and this is a, an interesting pattern. It's called the Zelda. Mm. And some of you, uh, will recognise it looks very much like a like a Francis. So a very yeah. famous salmon pattern, the Francis. But somehow, and Fulling Mill have managed to do this very well, they've managed to fit a bead on the front end of a treble hook. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it still bamboozles me how they've managed to do it, but it's on there. Use this in slow water, clear water, right. when fish are proving really difficult and actually you want to retrieve this quite quickly and you'll find that the fish will come chasing out after it. Uh, I first came across this fly on the banks of the uh, Latsa Kiosk yeah. in Iceland and sure enough within a couple of minutes of putting it on the end we also had a fish on the bank. Right. So Good definitely fun. have that one. Yeah. Moving on to, uh, to number seven and we have a very interesting fly and one that probably a lot of salmon anglers are, are afraid of using and that's a dry fly, the bomber. Very interesting pattern tied yeah. in this wolf, wolf style wing, uh, big hackle, big profile. Actually, this fish, uh, this fish, this fly, looks like it will make a lot of commotion and movement on the water, yeah. but in fact we fish it dead drift. Okay. So like a standard trout dry fly, these are very popular in the clear waters of the Canadian east coast, right. uh, where they can actually see the salmon, Yeah. and they cast it on a long, long thin leader, and then just dead drift it down to the fish and dry wait for it style. to rise. Yeah. Um, incredibly exciting, a lot of missed fish as you right. get yeah. over excited yeah. by it all, but an incredible pattern and actually one that works in Scotland, Norway, Russia, um, really it's a, it's a fly that should be in the box, oh, good. particularly if you're fishing mid-summer when weather's a bit warmer yeah. and conditions are a bit lower okay. and the water temperature's rising. 
Sticking with a, with a surface theme, uh, my choice for number six is a, is a little fly. Um, one that another that some people might be terrified of using because the salmon won't see it. But I can prove you wrong. Salmon will come tearing across the river after this. Yeah. And it's a, it's a hauger, um, so an Icelandic fly called a hauger, and it's called a hitch. What we've done, we've got a little hook there. You'll see it on the close up. There's actually a hole through the middle okay. of the tube. Um, we use this hole and thread the thread the leader material through, and that causes the fly to fish at at an angle, and that great red thread turn at the front will glow across the water as it yeah. skates. Okay. So we fish this downstream, and it moves across. Yeah. And the salmon will literally turn and chase it, and head and tail rise up. Really. And nice. uh, again, it's a thrilling way of catching. Uh, just remember not to strike when they do it. <laughs> uh, number five, uh, we're, we're getting to the, the real business end now. Uh, and that's sticking with the, with the small concept. We're going to hold this up and you can't see it. This is a, a micro treble, uh, the Arndilly Fancy. So a fly based um, out of Scotland, uh, but now a global success. Mm. Really is. Don't be afraid to fish them this small. Uh, in the low clear water of summer, this fly can be the difference between going home okay. empty handed and, and actually yeah. finding something. Fish it on long light leaders and quite often you can fish through a pool with this first and maybe you'll, you'll get a little take or, yeah, yeah. or nothing and then you can go through with a bigger fly. It's one that doesn't work very well if you fish a big fly through the pool right. first as that tends to then put them either, either spook salmon yeah, and put them yeah. on. Um, but you can fish this through a pool mm -hmm. and actually the salmon will still be ready to take another fly up. Yeah, yeah. Number four, and going back to uh, the original tying style, the flamethrower style, um, we have the Green Highlander. Um, this is a, a modern adaptation of a, of a very old pattern. It's actually over a hundred years old, the right. style of fly. Yeah. Um, and over that time, um, we've hardly found a colour combination that's more effective, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in peat stained water and yeah. slightly tannin stained water. Yeah, yeah. You've got the red, the yellows and the green that all literally glow and pop in, in that water. It's very effective all season long. Uh, again, worth carrying tube fly and hooked versions, right. yeah. but uh, definitely one to, to have in a box um, if you're travelling anywhere in the world. So, here we are, the top three. Number three, uh, we have the classic D monkey. This is a, a wonderful pattern, uh, particularly for those who are willing to brave the early season conditions. If you like fishing in snow, howling gales, yeah. pouring rain, in gloves, woolly hats, with the chance of catching the electric lit up salmon. This is your That's fly. Pattern. You'll see it's got a heavy cone on the front, full of mill. Tie them on various uh, tube, tube weights yeah. to help them get down. Early season, we're typically faced by cool water. And in those cooler um, conditions, the salmon actually like to stay okay. lower down yeah. in the water, so we need to get the fly to them. Uh, the longer wing in this uh, creates a lot of movement under the water, and it grabs that salmon's attention. And um, when they're in that state, they're, they're what we call a taking fish. Yeah, they're one okay. that's going to come shooting over and, and gobble us nice. up. Anyone that planning a, an early season trip for Scotland, uh, that's February, March, April, yeah. uh, this is a good fly. Uh, but abroad, Norway in June, Russia in June, uh, even Iceland, if you're, if you're there in, in the back end of June, uh, this is a fly that can bring you, bring you great okay. success. Number two. Uh, like the D monkey that we just looked at, um, we've got a very famous style of tying, uh, the temple dog, mm -hmm. uh, invented by Hawk and Norling. Uh, this style of pattern, shown up a little bit on, on the D monkey, it creates this big fur wing uh, that gives us a lot of movement. Yeah. And for the fish of Norway, um, they're known for being incredibly um, aggressive and they like a big profile fly. Um, some people have even been known to put two of these together yeah. and fish them as one big, one big fly. Yeah. A little bit more like a GT fly <laughs> than a salmon fly. Uh, but the salmon, particularly early season, will come hurtling over to this. Okay. 
uh, you'll notice that it's got that ready orange underwing and I particularly prefer these for low, low light conditions. Right. So either an overcast day or early mornings or late evenings when the sun's setting, that little bit of colour just seems to, to add to another pop, element yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and help catch those fish. Number one, uh, and, and it couldn't be anything else in my box, but yeah. the sun ray shadow. Um, probably accused, wrongly so, of being a modern fly. Uh, it was actually developed in, in the 1960s um, for Norway, so for, right. uh, for the Laredale River in Norway. And since then it has become just a global phenomenon and it's really produced salmon catches all over the world. Yeah. T to be honest, I don't know why that works any better than, than the others, but, but the long wing offers lots of movement. Yeah. We quite, quite often fish it up in the water. Okay. Salmon just seem to take real umbrage to this and they'll chase it down. Yeah. They'll slash at it, they'll jump out the water behind it. Right. And hopefully, probably half the time a fish that attacks this, you'll hook up on. Okay. Uh, the other half of the time, what you want to do is wake them up with this and then yeah. follow behind them with one of our other top one ten the other yeah. and we'll probably find that we'll get that fish on the bank. There we have it, our uh, wonderful top ten selection from Fuller Mill. Um, maybe we'll get you into a salmon or two this Maybe, season. we'll give it a go. Uh, so while Kieran's kindly tidying up my fly box, um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, why don't you uh, go to our page and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Before you take some, I'll give them away. So please leave a comment uh, underneath here um, and we'll pick a winner in a week's time.